Welcome to this week's edition of the Aerodale. I'm Chloe Lewis. And I'm Zachary Miller. Today we'll be covering drone safety, cheer national championship, choir performances, and much, much more coming up on the, the Aerodale. Aerodale. Directly from the Alma High School News Studio, covering news and sports from where it matters. You're watching the Airdale. Stop, drop, and roll. These are the tactics to help stay safe during a fire emergency. Damien Hallmark and Ethan Waite share some tips for fire safety. Fires are very dangerous and it is important for you to stay safe. Here's Mr. Kirkendall with information on our fire drills. The main reason we have fire drills uh, is so students know what to do in the event of an actual fire. They know it's hard on this campus to do everything exactly the way some smaller campuses do it because we have so many doors and so many exits. So we do it, we, we run that periodically. Sometimes it's just an announcement and we, we sound the alarm, so you know what it is, so all the fire doors shut and have you stay in the room. Sometimes we have you completely exit the building. The secondary reason that we do fire drills is because it's a state requirement. Listen. Uh, to listen is the most important thing for f during a fire drill. Um, we have a couple different alarms. So when we, when we sound the alarm of an actual fire, that you associate that noise, that alarm with, with the actual type of emergency. Uh, tornado, which is the inclement weather, alarm sounds completely different. So we'll make sure that you don't confuse those two. The most important uh, thing, like I said, is to listen, but also we, there will always be a directive associated with a fire drill. So, for example, sometimes those fire drills get set off inadvertently through a pull station, or we have smoke detectors in the ductwork. They may indicate to the panel that there's, an, that there's an issue. So if that happens and an alarm goes off, that's why we always make an announcement. So there's always an announcement made. We have an alarm panel that tells us exactly where the alarm is and tells us what it is so we can at that time we usually silence the alarm and we make an announcement um, make sure you that students aren't actually leaving the building so there'll always be so listening is important during a, during, a, during a drill so that you know that either we're conducting a drill or there's an actual event and that we will tell you what to do so most important thing is when you hear that alarm is to listen because it'll always be followed by an announcement fire should be taken extremely seriously and it is imperative that you follow all the rules and procedures to stay safe? Well, they're, they're crucial to our safety because like I mentioned earlier, so you'll know what to do. Um, if you heard an alarm and didn't know what it was and where, where to go or what to do, um, it's maybe not as important to high school age students as it would be to younger students because usually by the time you get here, you're old enough to kind of take care of yourself and so you can figure out how to get out of the building. Every teacher has a, um, a fire procedure at their exit on their door. It, it's, it's really not complicated, it's pretty simple. Basically, is if, you hear, if you're told to exit the room, you get up, you leave your belongings, you exit the room and you go outside and you're to be, um, basically attendance will be taken by your teacher, make sure you're outside. And then when there's an all clear, we go around and tell people to come back in, which complicates it in this building because this, this building is so large. To go around the, entire perimeter of this building would take several, several minutes. So sometimes if we don't have to go outside and actually muster outside and take a role in attendance, we don't do that. With Airways Media, I'm Damien Hallmark. Have you ever had a job? No, I have not. Well, your first job will always be one to remember, whether it's in retail or fast food. Xander Polito and Cameron Parvin took a closer look at our students' first jobs. Everybody has had a first job, and some of us share the same experiences from those first jobs. Here are some of the people's stories that we interviewed. My first job was answering phones on Saturday mornings at our family business. I liked that I was working for my dad and my grandpa, so I kind of had the flexibility to do what I wanted to. Of course, I was like 12 or 13, and it was kind of maybe even before Google was a thing, like we had old computers so I couldn't really surf my phone or anything. I didn't have a cell phone. Um, only got paid $20 for four hours worth of work, but I guess for a 14 year old, 12, 13, 14 year old, it wasn't too bad. At least I got to go shopping with some money afterwards. Uh, first job I worked at a uh, print shop here in town actually. Alma Printers was the name of the, uh, the shop. I, everything, every day was a little bit different. You know, we worked on everything from business cards to banners to just general copies. Um, you know, it was, it was definitely a uh, adventurous job. You never knew exactly what project you were going to work on. 
you know, it was kind of a messy job. You know, we had large print presses and we, we put, I literally put ink out of these canisters into, onto this, into the, the presses and onto the rollers. And it got, it got kind of messy. Uh, at times, uh, but uh, you know, there's paper everywhere and there's stuff on the floor and uh, you know, I'm kind of a neat freak sometimes. So that uh, something I didn't enjoy. This is Cameron Parvin and Xander Polito from Airwaves Media signing off. Did you know that Mrs. King and Mrs. Eikenberry offer an ACT course that if you pass, you get an extra course for graduation. Chloe Lewis has more. What is ACT workplace curriculum? ACT work place curriculum is testing your basic knowledge across the board in applied math, graphic literacy, which is reading charts and graphs, and workplace documents, which can include basic grammar, spelling, do you comprehend what is being written in text, emails, or anything that could be considered a workplace document. You walk with graduation cords, but it really benefits them once they go out into the world. We create them account with all of their personal information. Their test scores are up, um, loaded by the state of Arkansas. Most companies that, most companies will hire you if you have this certif certification over another employee who doesn't, or another applicant that does not have it, because it shows that you're ready to go into the workforce. So you can pass at five different levels, level three being the lowest, level seven being the highest, and in the workforce to the companies that use this program in all 50 states. That means a lot. The higher you score, the more ready you are to work. It is recommended that juniors and seniors take it. Um, we prefer you to take it your senior year if possible, but if you wanna take college and careers or JAG, your junior year, you can absolutely take it and pass it that year as well. If you have a question about it and if it would benefit you in particular for your career, come by and talk to Mrs. King or myself in the 1400 hallway and we'll be glad to speak with you about it. I'm Chloe Lewis from Airwaves Media. Mr. Tom McMurray is retiring this year, but what all has he accomplished during his time of being a part of the Alma School District is incredible. Cooper McIntyre and Zach Millsap talked with Mr. McMurray to find out. Here at Alma High School, there are some staff that will be retiring. One of them is Mr. McMurray. He has served on the Alma staff for many years, being a football coach, a track coach, and a history teacher. Uh, I have been a teacher coach for 42 years. 39 of those who have been in here at Alma. Uh, when I first came to Alma, I was the head junior high coach, assistant senior high coach in football, and uh, was the head track coach and junior head junior high track coach. Over the years, I ended up taking over the uh, senior high track program, and so I was I was the head senior high track coach uh, for about oh gosh, 25 of the 32 years I think I worked in. He has achieved many great things throughout his football and track career. Yes, in dirt football, we were very fortunate in 97 and 98, we won back-to-back -back state championships in football. Came close in 99, we were runner-up that year. Uh, my track team championships uh, in 2004, 2005, and again in 2009. Looking back on his career, Mr. McMurray said that he would not change anything at all throughout his career. Oh, I think there's. You think when you look back at uh, what you've done uh, over the years, there's always something you would do different. Uh, I don't know that I would have made a whole lot of changes because I was just in a very fortunate situation where I had good assistant coaches that worked that I worked with. I had really good athletes, and um, uh, you know, there's there's a game game or two down the line in football that we would do a couple of things differently, getting get hindsight and stuff. Uh, Track-wise, there was one or two meets that probably, state track meets that we possibly could have won uh, with just a little bit more prodding and stuff. So there's always something you change, but, but for the most part, it, the way things worked out is, is, is the way it's meant to be. This is Zach Millsap with Airways Media. Thank you all. The Alma High School Choir performed for all to see on May 11th at the Performing Arts Center. Our journalists took a closer look at what Mrs. Overton's final thoughts of the performance was. The choir concert's first one of the season was on Tuesday, May 11th at 7 o'clock p.m. at the PAC. They had an incredible performance and did several songs 
people may be familiar with that are, were very entertaining. Um, it's our spring concert, and so it's a lot of music that we hear on the radio or popular songs. It's our pop music concert, and it's our first concert of the year. At warm-ups, we just uh, start singing things to get our voices to sing high and low and basically just um, get our muscle ready to sing the songs that we're doing. So it's a quick warm up, you just sing up and down the scale, that kind of thing, just to get um, your voice used to singing because you don't walk around the hall singing. So The students have been working hard to prepare themselves for this concert. It's an important concert to the people involved due to not having the last year's concert. We were approved when the governor lifted the mandate for the choir program, we thought there was a chance at that point that we would have, that we would be able to do a spring concert. We hope everyone enjoyed this year's performance and we are looking forward to the ones next year. I'm Evan Sanderson for Airwaves Media. The Alma High School band program has been through a lot during COVID-19 with their restrictions. Now that those restrictions have been lifted, they were finally able to have their first performance since December of 2019. Michael Farrell speaks to the band about their performance. The band hasn't had a concert since winter 2019, and all the preparation that they had sure paid off. Since we have finally got our directives changed for band, we can actually play our instruments the proper way. No masks, no instrument PPE, bell covers, and we finally have both groups into their band rooms. It is hard to capture how hard some of the students work every single day to get the music to that point of greatness in practice and concert. I think the concert's going to be amazing. We're so excited to finally get to perform. It's been since December of, of 2019 since we've had a concert, so very excited to be able to get back into the Performing Arts Center. It's clear that the crowd was very impressed with the music being played, even with the circumstances and limitations of the band making preparation much harder. Personally, I think I did really well. There were a few mistakes, but I think it went really well. I think it was really good but there were some points where it felt like we were doing a little less than what we could be doing. So of course, This has been Michael Farrell with Airwaves Media, signing out for the last time this year. How's your day been? It's wonderful. You know, I think you might need to take a look at this next story. Sarcasm is something teens use a lot, but when is sarcasm taking far too far? Evan Shibley talks to our students to find out how far is too far. Comedy has always been an art form where shock is easily implemented, and many times you hear that a certain joke or comedy bit cross the line. But what does that really mean? What is crossing the line and what even is the line? This is a topic that is very polarizing to some individuals, so obviously there will be many different opinions on the subject. Well, a light joke can be you're just joking around, you're laughing while you say it, to a harsh joke can be when you're going to personal problems they have, or you're very strict with it, with your tone, your body language, and everything else. It depends on whether or not there is respect to the body. And when I say that, I mean, is what being said reflective of the history of that person you're making a joke on? You know? As our society becomes more tolerant and critical of seemingly intolerant speech, comedy has taken a heavy hit on what you can and can't say. Ironic enough, some people believe that this has crossed the line by censoring people who are just trying to get a couple laughs. They're being too sensitive over things I've been over here for 20 years, 10 years. Others, however, think that this behavior is justified because they are taking down the intolerant speech that is damaging to mar marginalized communities. If you're using a marginalized community as the butt of a joke, simply because you think it's funny, then you're exploiting that body as a vessel of your own entertainment. And there's no respect for that person being said. So I no matter your viewpoint, remember not to judge anyone based on their opinion of this subject. After all, we're just trying to have a laugh in the right way. This is Evan Shibley with Airways Media. You know, here at Alma High School, we have some amazing staff. And we're so thankful for them, just like... Mr. Therese. He's known for many things around the school, from the owner of the beloved Aridel Jack to the face of the Alma High School Library. The students, as well as the staff at our school, are very thankful for all that he does. Brianna Langston has more. 
I have been working at Alma High School for 30 years. Retiring is hard for some people. A matter of fact, some people don't think it's hard at all. The last 30 years have really gone by in a hurry. Uh, I just can't believe it's 30 years. It seemed like just the other day it was 10 and then 20. And you know, I have kids that in school now that I went to school with their grandparents and I had their parents in class. I don't think anyone knows how hard they have worked for anyone, whether it's teaching or working with people at work and caring for and loving the ones they have worked with for a very long time. The biggest thing that I will miss at Alma High School be uh, the relationships that I've built with the, the faculty and staff and the students. I just want to thank them for everything they have been through and with us. This is Brianna Langston with Airways Media. Drones are used more and more each day, even in our very own school and in ROTC. Andrew Cross has spoke to the ROTC program to find out what safety precautions they are taking to ensure the safety of flying drones. Drones, pretty cool, right? Trust me, I completely agree. Drones are some great fun, but there's also some things that you need to be aware of when you're flying one. You should always maintain a safe distance from the drone and other objects or obstructions, especially people. Never fly when unauthorized and never fly too high. Drones can be very useful when it comes to certain applications and they can just be a source of great fun. Remember to be safe when using drones and be sensible. So Navy came out a few weeks ago and started talking about what we could do in JROTC uh, to introduce our students to STEM programs. And they floated the idea of drones and you know while they're still talking about it you know commander raymer and i talked real quickly and said this is a great idea we need to do this uh it's, it's a perfect way to introduce our students uh to a stem type curriculum um also uh you know the basic theories of flight aeronautics you know aerodynamics the physics of flight uh what what makes an aircraft fly? Um, so, you know, we found these, these drone kits that are, uh, they were priced exactly right. We didn't really have very high hopes for them, but they uh, exceeded, they have exceeded our expectations at every turn. You know, it's given us an opportunity uh, here at the end of the school year to keep school interesting, which is hard to do in May. Um, and, and have a little fun and learn something while we're doing it. The hazards, uh, obviously things falling out of the sky. Uh, <laughs> gravity is not only a good idea, it's the law. So, you know, things, uh, things falling out of the sky it, it is really the biggest hazard that we have. Um, you know, especially with these aircraft. Now, if we end up advancing and going to a more professional grade aircraft, uh, there's a lot a lot of difference between getting hit with a drone that's three ounces versus a drone that may be nine pounds. So, uh, but as far as real hazards, there's no, no real hazards involved in this. This is Andrew Cronister with Airwaves Media. Thank you for watching. As most are aware, the Alma High School cheer team won first place at the virtual national cheer competition, but they couldn't have done it without the best cheer coach around. Stephen Miller talked with the coach as well as the cheerleaders about happiness of winning. Recently, the Alma Cheer team won the Cheer National Championships. Traveling was limited due to COVID-19, therefore the competition was virtual. They had put in months of hard work practicing every day at school and having after school practice as well. So this year our cheerleading competition was virtual because we were not able to travel due to COVID and so we um, had to film our routine here in our gym here in the arena and we sent a video of our routine in to the judges and they judged it and um, it was about a month long process where we had a prelim round and a finals round and luckily we came back with the result that we had come out on top. It was about a month long process with a preliminary round and a finals round. So we practice a lot. We practice every single day um, in school, in class, and then we practice after class as well. So we've put in a whole lot of work. We started working on this routine 
back in July. So um, it was about nine months of work on this specific routine, which was a lot of, a lot of work. They had put in months of hard work practicing every day at school and having after school practice. Um, a lot of people don't realize how much goes into cheer. They just see us on the sidelines, but um, so much goes into it. We go to community events, we practice for competition, we have pep rallies, and so it's really a lot of work and I think that's one thing that people need to know before getting involved. It was their continuous tenacity that allowed them to get to the top. A big congratulations to the Alma Cheer team. They more than deserve this victory. When COVID-19 came into our lives, the world took a turn, but people came up with some amazing ideas to help it go as back to normal as possible. I thought it was kind of cool how more people got involved in esports. Esports can benefit students at Alma in a lot of ways. If a person wanted to go into esports or game design field, they would have a lot easier time getting to that point. So basically, we got approached by Ms. Parker, and she let us know that we are starting an esports team, and so me and a few other friends thought that would be a really cool idea. So. We basically just, we talked to her, we got everything set up, and every Thursday at four we would have a game. I think maybe the season's over by now, but we would, we would uh, just play best of five or best of three match every Thursday and hope for the best. So my opinion on esports in high school, I think it's a really good idea. It's a great opportunity to let uh, kids who don't uh, participate in much have a chance to express himself in, in the form of video games. For me, I, since I was a kid, I've always dreamed of playing video games competitively, being in a team or not, and um, having this eSports group has really, it's, it's been fun. I've enjoyed it quite a lot. Cool. eSports also benefits team building, so it can help with anything that you decide to go into. So with this being our first year doing esports, we only played one game and that was Rocket League. In the future, we might look at adding extra games to the program depending upon what is offered through the um, Arkansas Activities Association and through the Play Versus platform that we use. I think having an esports team really benefits students here at Alma High School because we have a few kids who really enjoy playing video games or they want to go into video game development after school and this just allows them the opportunity to um, play something that they enjoy and then possibly apply for scholarships and go into this career field as they graduate. With the inclusion of esports in the pool of activities to participate in at AHS, it is overall a net positive experience for everybody. This has been Michael Farrell with Aries Media, signing off. Hmm, where would you be in 10 years? Lincoln Medlock talked to the other students to find out where would they be in 10 years. It's a classic question that you've probably heard a few times in school. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Uh, in 10 years, I see myself pursuing my dreams and joining the military and starting a family. I see myself um, in a hospital working as a nurse or a head nurse. See me as being a mechanic. I want to be, uh, well, I don't really know yet. I'm still thinking. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Another part of the future is having a possible family. Probably three kids. Yes, I plan on having at least two kids and a beautiful wife. Yeah, thinking about having like two kids and with a wife. Mm, yeah, two, three kids. Yeah, two or three kids, something like that. This is Lincoln Medlock signing out for the rest of the year. Thanks for watching this edition of The Airdale. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow all of our social medias at Airwaves Media. And always by the wise words of Team Mac, Go, Go Airdales! Airdales.